Rewind back. Almost 10 years ago on YouTube, there was some dedicated diehard game hunting channels around, and there are very few a decade later. I will say very few that still dedicated diehard retro game collectors. I'd like to say I'm proud to be one of those. But a lot of things change, right? In 10 years, no matter what it is, some things change in a million different ways, right? Woo, it's the world. 10 years, you can't tell me that 10 years ago you expected so many things that happen nowadays. Same goes for retro collecting. So for me, one of the biggest changes is back in the day, diehard retro collector, still am, but I also flip and resell now. <gasps> don't say the words, don't say it. There's still out there who will, people out there who will banish you for existing, for being a collector, but also selling. Let's talk about it a little bit. All right, mind the gardeners outside. I don't care, this video is not planned. I just said, I'm gonna film it, so too bad. 10 years ago, game hunting scene. Where was it at in the retro collecting community? You're a collector, that's it. Sign, seal, deliver, you're out. That's it, that's the whole story. 10 years ago on YouTube. If you're a collector on YouTube, you collected, you didn't sell. That was it, there was no both, okay? You were banished. Quite literally, I've talked about it a million times, so I don't wanna go too deep into detail of the past of where it was because I've talked about it so many times. Yes, back then you either just collected or you didn't collect. There was no collecting and selling. Fast forward, like five years. I'd say maybe three to four years ago, things started changing where people started popping up on YouTube who were collectors, diehard collectors, but also flipped, what? I thought this wasn't accepted. It wasn't, but, but, but now it is. People are coming in who collect to also flip. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm necessarily there yet. Fast forward a little more. My mind started turning. Like two years ago, I'd say maybe I was like, okay, I've seen too many people on YouTube do this. They're collectors, right? They're collectors at this point. Stop. Stop saying they're not. That's, that's stupid. Let me just be honest with you. People can still collect and resell and flip. Oh my, really? No way. I thought it was just one or the other. That, that's how I thought sometimes too. I'll be honest. My mind like two years ago, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this. I started throwing some stuff in Mercari, stuff I didn't need, right? And I was like, oh, I just made money off something I don't use anymore. I can throw it in, in, a, in, a, in a box, if that makes people happy. I can throw it in a box in, my, in a room where I'll never see it and possibly lose it, if that makes people feel happy. And what's interesting is I found the only reason that I wasn't flipping stuff was literally like a 3%, 5% audience of people in the audience who might be like, hey man, that's bad. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be. Fl I thought you were a collector. And your brain as a content creator, you see some of those comments and you're like, oh no, I, I've been exposed. I, maybe they're right. I am a scumbag for doing this. But no, as I started selling things at Mercari, probably like three to 500 sales on there. I was like, oh, I can use the money from the stuff that I don't want anymore and buy more of this again, or I can buy it on my family stuff, whatever I want, right? It's my money. That's America and other places too. But I was like, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. But at that time I still wasn't selling a lot. I mean, again, three to 500 sales is probably kind of a lot. Even then it wasn't enough to really find myself buying like bigger, big items that I wanted. It was like enough just to keep my hobby going, which was great because for eight years before that, I was only spending like my family's money, so to say, you know, which I could afford it. I'll be honest with you guys. But at the same time, I was like, eh, well, I don't really like spending the money that could go towards this that, and put it there instead of rather save and invest. That's just how my brain works. Buy a home, buy multiple homes, whatever it may be. So with that said, Whatnot came along. Ooh, I know some people don't like the word. Oh, Gary, it's mean. People are bad on whatnot. Oh, God. Can't get a deal on whatnot. It's not possible. Wrong. Gotten good deals. And I've gotten myself overpaying on stuff, too, because I got excited. Wait, personal responsibility? Oh, my God. That's a thing. Next time the grocery store raises prices on milk, I'm gonna ask them to shut down because I can't resist myself and darn it, I want my milk. Jokes aside, Whatnot came on and it worked for us. They reached out to us, they sponsored us, great. Thank you God, more companies that I actually like reach out to me for sponsorships because I turned down so many that I'm like, I don't care about that, I'm being honest. Would the money be great? Sure, but it's just not for my channel. So Whatnot came along, sponsored us. Yes, they're great. I'm still gonna be selling on it till as long as I can, even if they don't sponsor us, I've already said that. <laughs> but it became easy for us, right? And for us and many others, I've talked to so many people and also, Breaking news for people out there. Whatnot, the highest performers on Whatnot who do the best in the retro category. Breaking news, it's not YouTubers. It is not YouTubers. We got the numbers. With that, it became something easy for us as not full-time resellers. Ricky and I were like, hey, we can unload our stuff. And guess what? In the beginning, yes, there was a lot of excited people overpaying and stuff in our rooms. And like the first two, three live streams, this is fun, this is wild for us too. Oh my gosh, and now it's everything's 
evened out. Some stuff sells for more, some stuff sells for less, some stuff sells in the middle, and guess what that does? evens out. It all evens out and it's great. So it's a resource for Ricky and I to be able to sell more often. And we're learning things as we're doing this. We're learning things as weeks go by. Every week we're on there. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. Every week that goes by, Ricky and I are like, great, this is great. We'll buy stuff in lots now. Finally, we're buying big things in lots where we can get games that we wanted, just like I did down there, just like I've been doing now. I've been now able to buy really good stuff that I've always wanted. Big old kiosks, big expensive signs for $700 that I never wanted to spend the money on before because I didn't want to spend my family's money and now what have I learned what have I learned since being a <gasps> reseller who also collects first thing I never knew about resellers this is something that hit my head and I was like I never thought about it that way when you see someone on a platform Mercari eBay whatnot all these different things it's like when someone's like dude I sold it for 40 my brain's like yes I sold this I, they sold that for 50 bucks they made great money they bought it for 40 they made ten dollars no they didn't they paid for fees they pay taxes they take their time time is money and shipping materials probably broke even you have to have a pretty good margin I've learned I didn't think about this in the beginning but as time goes on it's making more sense okay you got to get better deals got to get better deals because but people on the internet are like, dude, that guy, that guy has a scumbag. They bought it for 30 and I saw him saw it for $45 on eBay. And he made like four bucks. And I didn't know this. I was the same guy doing the same thing. Sounds like I'm making fun of everybody, but same thing for me. I was in the same boat, about the same thing. Now I'm learning. Another thing I've learned, I always knew this, but definitely swap meets pay off swap meets, flea markets, going out there, putting in the grind, putting in the time because it's a new world out there. Not everybody wants to go outside. Let me, let's be honest. We've kind of in 2020, 2021, 2022, probably 2023 going forward. We're getting a little lazy. Let's be honest. Or hey, look, a click of a button. Hey, I can buy this from doing nothing. I can sh do this and do nothing, but that pays off for us because we're willing to go out there, go to the grind week after week after week after week after week after week after week for, week for 10 years, putting in the time. So it pays off. This is like one of those things where it's like, yeah, you, you want to put out that time. People enjoy it. People like it. On Mercari, where I've been selling Mercari, OfferUp and whatnot, pretty much the only places I sell stuff. People are like, thank you for finding this stuff because it makes it easier for them. They're not spending the gas, the time, the effort, the energy, making things easier. That's what the world is kind of about right now. We're on that, that trend of how to make things easier while, while doing less. That's what I've learned. The swap me pays off. <laughs> Another thing I've learned in this journey of being a hardcore collector to now being a hardcore collector, but also someone who resells pretty often basis now, no matter what you do, no matter how you collect, let me tell you, people are gonna hate. That's life. There's a reason I deleted Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff years ago, five years ago. People hate no matter what you do. All you can do at the end of the day, and I tell this as big advice to people, no matter what you do, at the end of the day, if you can go to bed, the end of the night, alone, close your eyes and think to yourself, did I do the right thing? Am I doing what makes me happy? If the answer is yes, then guess what? You can feel good about yourself. And that's really all that should matter. Really, the only minds that should be speaking into your brain about the right thing should be you, your family, and your friends and those who love you and care about you. Though the, those that are causing noise, it's simply background noise. And you know what? There's a way, a healthy way to disagree. There's so many people I disagree with on the internet right now with everything. But guess what? How I disagree. Right on, bro. You do you. I hope you're happy in the end. It's so much world peace. Do what makes you happy. As long as you're doing it in a healthy way, that's right and you feel good about it, at the end of the day and know you're doing the right thing, that's all you can do, you keep living. Another thing that I learned now reselling, I, I take kind of, I like to see the difference between these different things, the different avenues that I use, Mercari versus whatnot versus OfferUp. Close buy stuff is gonna be the best, right? OfferUp, you're not paying taxes on this, so maybe you're not paying taxes, and don't pull that, don't do it, don't say Offer up, let's just say it is ideal, but you also get by far the least traffic. By far gonna get the least traffic. Mercari for me is the next one. I know I could probably get more on eBay or Amazon, but again, not being a full-time reseller, don't have time for this stuff. I work a full-on day job, 50 hours a week, plus editing and editing my own channel and just hanging out with my family. That's, got, that's my number one priority each day. Make sure at the end of the day, every day, I'm feeling good about my family.
For my bigger items, I normally use Mercari. Again, because whatnot versus whatnot versus Mercari, whatnot is a little bit more of a risk. It's totally more of a risk, especially, especially with expensive items. It really just depends who's in the room at what moment. You could be in a room and be like, dude, I'm doing great. This is great. I'm getting retail and everything. Or maybe even a little above. <gasps> But then you get those items, you might throw a bigger item on. And guess what? Some of the people that were in that room that might have been the, the big spenders are gone. They're not there. Not going to watch every time you do this. It's just life. Gabo. Gabo has probably sold like four consoles that he severely lost money on. The thrill can kill. And that's okay. That's part of the risk of it. it, it, it you, you never know. So I like to put stuff that I could. Ideally, I would put everything on offer up if I could, but you you don't have half the audience. So eh, for me, nope, big X. Pfft, don't have the time. Pretty much my, my ghost days are Mercari and whatnot. Mercari for more of the big, big items to make sure I'm at least getting somewhat of what it's worth. And if you've ever been in my whatnots, again, not sponsored. At the end of my streams, I normally throw on some really big stuff and just have fun with it. But that's kind of where I sit or stand because I'm standing. Here is something I never thought about before and it never really clicked in my head. It's something that I would have enjoyed. And this is just a fun, random thing. Shipping for me is super therapeutic. I don't know why. And I talk about packaging my stuff, not actually driving to the post office. That's not therapeutic. I live in California. But when it comes to boxing and wrapping the items, I put on NES music and I don't put on remixes. I don't put on a synthwave version, a lo-fi, nothing. I am just straight up, straight up NES music, just vibing, man. And I'm just like in a, in a, in a warp zone. Shit, tape. Bubble wrap, new box full. And I just have that music going. And it's just therapeutic to me. I don't know what it is. And I've been doing it for like solidly more like six months now. And I still like it. Am I in the honeymoon phase? And I'd say the biggest thing that I mentioned earlier, but I want to really reiterate is it just helped me personally keep my collection going in bigger and better ways than I ever could have imagined. And what we all know now is yes, we buy big lots and you keep a couple items out of it or whatever you want out of it. And then I can flip the rest, retail prices, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. I don't know, just depends what it sells for anywhere. That's give or take of the world, who knew? With that money, I get to buy myself really cool stuff and keep that train going. And before you know it, you have this big old collection and you feel like, gosh darn it, I spent near nothing on it. So it's been great to me. So final thoughts. From a collector, hardcore, to a reseller, mild core, because I spend far more time in my day jobs, but somewhere in the middle. Final thoughts? I, I, I feel like, to be honest, I wish I would have jumped in sooner. That's my honest thoughts. Because I feel like at the way this is going, I'm like, man, I spent so much of my YouTube life and even collecting life being like, I'm only gonna buy an item if it's under 20 bucks. That's just how it is, man. I, I don't got I don't got I don't got the ability. Well, to be honest. I do have the ability to spend more, but I just didn't like to. You know, I was like, I don't wanna spend more on this this stuff. It's just like, eh, what do I, I don't need it all. But the problem was, I would buy it and I'd go put it in a storage somewhere. Oh, let me go put it in a tote box and sit it in a shed and display what I could in whatever way I was displaying because I'm always change, changing my displays. And it just felt weird. That's why I'd buy little things at little bits of times, but now I'm like, oh, keep what I want, play what I want, and blah, 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 blah. with the rest. With that said, do I make sense? Probably not. Do I hate on the way you collect or resell or any of the things? No. I don't care what you do with your life. It's your life. Why would I care? Why should I care? It's not directly affecting me. And if it is, I just won't buy it. If I'm like, hey, you're raising the prices of games. Guess what? I won't buy those games. And guess what? As I said earlier, I'm willing to go to the swap meet until I darn find a game like that. If I want to pay a cheap price for that, I will wait until I can get it for a cheap price. Or if I can buy it in a big lot, I'll buy it in a big lot. That's just me. That's my way of collecting. So how do you do this? How do you still collect? Are you still diehard? If you are, hey, more power to you. Or are you are you like me? You're somewhere in the middle. Now. You're like, oh, I like to kind of do both. Or are you full-time flipper and you're like, bro, games are shh. Games are for kids. Let me know down below. Either way, I love and respect however you do it. That is so important. My God. Respect your fellow man, even if you disagree with them. That's simple. It's just that simple. Why am I in such a mood? I'm hungry and delusional. Probably shouldn't have filmed this like this today. I love you.